All right, we have one match done in Group D, but plenty more to go right now to find out who the two players are that will move on to the round of 16 to join everyone else in Poland in a couple weeks' time. So the next match coming up will be Haas versus Ayakis. And uh, Haas, let's let's talk about that a little bit, because I think that's kind of the focal point of this whole group, right? It's mm -hmm. like, well, Haas is, Haas is here. How is everyone going to deal with Haas? <laughs> that seems to be the question on everybody's mind. And it is three Terrans versus Haas, so there's that kind of matchup, too, of uh, PBTs all day for Haas. What do you think, Roddy? Uh, what do you think the outcome is going to be? Because I know most people are saying, Haas, not, he's not going to have yeah. a chance in this group. And you were telling me before, like, please. I I Please. know, I'm actually very <laughs> surprised that for a lot of people, they seem to think that Haas is going to go down 0-2-0-2 over here, or maybe 1-2-0-2, and I completely disagree. Like, yes, he's a gimmicky Protoss, but on a certain point where if you learn your gimmicks to perfection, <laughs> you get really good at it, and he's way more experienced in crazy scenarios than any of the other players ter or Terrans in this group. He's made it to, like, rank 30, rank 40 GM on the Korean server, so I think on that point, you're so good in executing these, yeah, gimmicky, risky builds, but then it doesn't even matter anymore. You, you can almost tell your opponent, I'm going to do it. But he's so good in exploiting small weaknesses in Terran defense that I think we're going to see a very strong Haas here. And I think he could make it out of this group. But so maybe I'm completely me, wrong. But Haas is not like your ordinary sliced cheese that you buy at the supermarket. He's no. been like fermenting his cheese for a couple hundred years he, now. And he's like he's, showing up. He's like, no one can handle this yes. one. He just no. puts it on the plate. Still stinks, though. The, the, <laughs> there is like American cheese and then there is Dutch cheese. You know, uh, like, uh, OK. And he's, <laughs> he's Dutch cheese. I've never, I've never had Dutch cheese. But well, it's, <laughs> you did. Of craft macaroni and cheese <laughs> like that, you're gonna catch some. You're gonna catch some. You've trouble. had Gouda, right? Or uh, Gouda? No, uh, Gouda. Actually, no, Gouda is I've Dutch. Had, is it yes, really? it's Gouda. Well, now we now My we learn something bulldog new. My sister's is named Gouda. 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 We'll we'll have to rename Chauda. that one. But, <laughs> Jeff, what do you think? Do you do you buy that? I mean, because Rotterdam seems to be pretty convinced. Like gimmicks or not, if you're playing it well, it's gonna be hard to handle. What do you think? No. Uh, Rotterdam is like a snake oil salesman back here. He gets us, <laughs> he gets us jib jibbing and jiving on some weird concepts. I, no, to be serious, yeah. I mean, uh, everyone, well, maybe not everyone. If you guys haven't seen some of Hass's other WCS antics, he's most famous for making Calaris and Todd just kind of absolutely lose it during a broadcast because, joking aside, he is committed to doing some pretty crazy stuff. And we on the analyst desk can make all the jokes we want, but in particular, in PVT, when you're like, surely the guy isn't making five Void Rays and pure stalkers <laughs> off of one base. And then all of a sudden they show up and your two Widow Mines both hit the same stalker. And you're mm -hmm. like, wait a second. Am I about to die right now? Yes, you are. And, and you, you go over to Hass on, on camera and he's focused, like his brain, like just sweat trickling down his forehead. He's like, more stalkers. Another <laughs> Void Ray. More stalkers. You know, and like that's all it takes. It, you can do that weird yeah. kind of stuff and it works. And. This is the time to do it, too, because, to be honest, getting a little bit philosophical on you, the bigger the matches, a lot of times for more players, the more unwilling they are to take those risks. So those yeah. guys that are super crazy, they're the ones really disrupting the group. And Haas has that potential, and I hope so, by the way, because we've had a pretty straight and narrow groups A through D so far. It's been, we did. It's been very like straight-laced and, and, and ball cap on. Yeah, Haas is the means. type of player that if you are a North American or European protos for all that matter, and you just want to get that one promotion, it doesn't matter if you're Diamond League, Gold League, Master League, you just want to get that one promotion, you look at how Haas is going to play today, you copy those builds, <laughs> and you collect Terran tears around the world because they are they are nasty, they're dirty, and they are going to hit very hard. On the other end, then it seems like, well, I guess has to be prepared for this. I mean, of yeah, course. All, all three turns, new coming in, they're like, all right, well, we have our TVTs and then we have Haas. It's like not even my <laughs> typical TVP. So Ayagas, of course, had a pretty decent run in Season 2, showed up to really play, and he was very content with how well he did. He was already content just going to the round of 16. He's, just, he's a solid player. I, we've seen a lot of his actually surprising results in the TVP matchup in particular. If you let him get to mid-game, yeah. he is going to show up with a lot, a lot of units. So it's going to be... That's a big if, though, because uh, this guy right here, Haas, has no designs to go the distance. He's not like a... Well, at three Nexus, that's really when I start to shine. No, no, no. He's never seen a third Nexus. No. He's seen him in three. He's seen him in a best of three. He's heard stories about yeah. it, but he's never actually seen it. For him, a third Nexus is like the Lognet monster. You know, it could exist, it could not exist. Doesn't really matter. Can't well, confirm. I think most people are pretty excited for this match. If you didn't know about Haas, well, now you know. And we're going to see Kota Moonlight. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Haas's pick. And, then and of course, he picked it. Yeah, yeah of course. Where is think about this? Guy. Where's the Stargate going to be? <laughs> I think, oh. by the way, I have a very strong feeling we're going to see a proxy Tempest of ours. 
You think so? Yeah. Oh. So that's why you're picking him to win. You're a little bit of a fanboy there. Oh, and okay. Icas has actually well, multiple times he has stated on Twitter that he don't he doesn't think it's very good and Proto's play should to be stop fair, doing it. So now now this is my time to shine. Okay, because okay. I saw a comment. Our, our lovely fans on Reddit, they said, actually, Terran players complain about just about everything. So if you if you look carefully, you could pick a quote from all of them where they complain about one individual unit of every Protoss thing that they ever make. So <laughs> I'm sure he tweeted at one point or another that he hated Tempest. But No, he doesn't hate him. He thinks it's not good, actually, at all. He thinks oh, he it's very easy oh, to defeat. Okay. Dang it. You stole my thunder. Oh, all right, well, well <laughs> here's Coda. Yeah, what, what's to off. say about it? I mean, look, the matchup is fairly balanced on that map. It is probably the most played map. And as we go on, it's going to continue that way. I am really excited about Moonlight Madness, though. Like, Kevin made the joke, where's the Stargate <laughs> going to go? But to be honest, there's other things, too. There's back, there's like a double layer of back rocks. Inside your main, you have a back rock entryway that you yeah. can knock down fairly easily. But even in front of that, there's two other destructible rock entryways into what could be your natural or your third. The map is madness! I just I just wish we could all be looking at Rotterdammer. He's got the biggest grin on his face. He's like, yes, can't wait to watch this game. <laughs> no, this is just going to be really fun, because in the previous season, round of 32, when Haas played, he was in a crazy group with Elfie and Jadong. We had a lot of hype expectations of this group is going to be madness, but then it could also be disappointing, right? What if the games are boring, one-sided? But it didn't. It really lived up to all the craziness. <laughs> is that the one where he can Yeah, yeah. No. no, no, not that one. Okay, uh, that was right, longer right. ago, but... You know, he really brought everything that we expected and more to the show. You know, the games didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> and I just hope we see stuff like that today. It sounds like it will be an exciting game and possibly many more to come here in Group D, depending on how well Haas does. Of course, no, neither player will be out after this one, their very first game in the round of 32, just to determine who has a step up towards the round of 16. I guess it looks just absolutely common collectively. He's like, whatever. I mean, Haas, you know, if it's going to be Mimikyu or whatnot, I'm pretty ready to play. Just going to play his own game. He definitely knows but what he can expect to some degree. Like, he's not a stranger to Haas. We're not a stranger to Haas, and I guess is neither. And I guess was no, like, oh, wait, it's, it's they, Haas, they know actually. The <laughs> they know the legend. And, you know, to talk a little bit more about Styles as well, I guess is a guy who... Yeah, okay. It's I guess is actually off the stage, so we can we can say some trade secrets about I guess. I don't think we'd be alerting him to himself very well. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's like, you're right, Jeff. I do suck at that point in the game. <laughs> I, will, I will totally not do that thing that I do. Uh, he's very straight and narrow. Very. You're not going to see. I don't think any cheese out of him. Mm -hmm. He is a macro-oriented player, which means he likes to produce a lot of stuff. He's the guy that's kind of the big war machine. Now laying out. What do we have? A T-shirt from 1998. Oh, that's <laughs> I'm nice. actually trying to figure, figure it out here. I think it says Polska. I think it says... Uh, ah. I think he got it from Carmack, maybe. You know, my ah. putting the pieces together, I think Igas has some Polish roots, and he probably got this T-shirt from... Yeah, it says Polska. So it's a, it's a Polish national shirt. Well, Sherlock Rotterdam here. It just it, it bleeds Carmack because it's yes. like not funny at all. It's going over everyone's head. <laughs> He's somewhere in the back room laughing hysterically. He's like on the floor rolling. No, he's just very proud right now. That's no, I mean, like, he is. Uh, so? Carmack's yeah. a very, okay. very proud guy. But of course, I think Iga's, also, <laughs> Iga's also willing to willing to comply. And seems like maybe that'll give him the edge. But Haas, I don't think, is going to throw been thrown off at all. He's like, all right, I just can't wait. He's the thrower. He's he who knocks, man. <laughs> every time. every He's been around. He's been into a few of these round of 16s, round of 32. Mm -hmm. And he gets pretty good results. Like I just uh, referenced something. It was like, I, I think it was, it wasn't Wings of Liberty where he can rush. No, on, no, was that it? was on the, the Polar Knights map. It was a, a I think, while ago. Uh, I think it was WCS America Season 2 2014 or something like that. Okay. Yeah, well, quite some time ago. But I, I know a lot of people remember that if you did watch it. So uh, it sounds like Haas hasn't really disappointed any of the fans that follow his style specifically. We'll see if I guess is ready for it. It's going to be match number two brought to you by none other than Nate and Huck. The Wheel of Cheese begins to <laughs> spin, Huck, as we get into the first game. You're already missing it. He sent his first worker across. Well, I'm already happy. I'm yeah, good. we immediately saw the game start and we're like, and something crazy. <laughs> something crazy. Production game, the game. Get the, game. Like the first thought I had. I was like, well, as you guys can see, there is a little red dot on the mini-map from this gentleman in the southeast, the Red Protoss. Your worst nightmare, he's Haas. And boy, oh boy. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you lose to people who what? put pylons what in your main on ladder, that's the face. <sighs> okay, I guess I'll introduce him. It is, I guess he wants to go to Poland. He's going to have to do something crazy to defend this. I don't, what do you do, Nate? I don't. So this is weird, right? I'm imagining he's just going to build a gateway yeah. in his face. No, there's no there fear. There it is. There's no fear from Haas already. <sighs> 
So how does so how does I guess respond? If you're a Terran player, I don't, you kill honestly, a I have there's guys that I have like marked on my friend list that do weird stuff like this, yes. right? And you know, as a bad player, usually I can get away with just pulling workers yes. and canceling the gateway because then they can't get a cyber core, then they can't build a mothership yeah. core of stalkers. So uh -huh. you're like, whatever, lose mining time, don't let them build zealots in your base. But now with Chrono Boost, it's going to be a zealot and a probe versus just SCVs and a marine. Like, imagine this build works and it just breaks every future PVT game that's ever going to happen. Yeah. Like, they're just, they just come out too quick. We can go back to the list of reasons why I do like playing Legacy of the Void so much. Less. I don't, yeah, I don't, I feel like he's not going to be able to get a Zealot out quick enough. Yeah, if you can kill it before the Zealot finishes, that's always nice. But if Haas builds a pylon back home, the thing is, the gateway what? finished. Yeah. So, if he gets the Cybernetics core, he can still go for some sort of weird tech follow-up, because he did take a gas. This reminds me of, like, uh, Bisu, PvP, Brood War, where he, oh, he, he got, got the probe. probe. That's Very a big nice. deal. That is a very big deal, and he just cancels, so he cancels the, zealot. the zealot. So he'll start the cybernetics core. Wouldn't definitely. you just leave one SCV because it's just going to get shields back? Okay, and the marine comes out. Yeah. That's fine. And it's now funky. we have no idea. I, so I he's got to go Oracle. Come on. I assume I guess no is way ahead here, right? Uh, you you want to believe that, but then then <laughs> you remember you really that you're. Know? If this is me, I'm thinking my opponent stole Protoss. So ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, you can never forget about you that. You can never forget about that, you know. You don't need a gateway to build oracles, yeah. Puck. And that's all we need to win. But surely Iagas has also considered that possibility. And he built a gateway. He built another gateway. So it looks like he's going to be kind of standard. I mean, I do think he needs a gateway. <laughs> ah, not really. <laughs> Just built two Stargates yeah. off your Cypher Let's be real here. So where does this leave us? We were at 16 workers for the Terran, 17, 18 for the Protoss just now. And it looks like I want to. And he's got a mule too, right? So I want to say I guess is in. Okay. Well, well, stage two. I told you. We spin the wheel again. <laughs> Where is it gonna land? And it looks like it's gonna be Stargate, just by the positioning. But I guess is like immediately going out to Scotty. He's it going looks the like wrong way. He okay. should split the Marines. You don't need. Yeah. Okay. You okay. don't need a buddy. You don't need cool. a Thunder buddy to go with you. That's it's not true. even raining. There we go. This there is not heavy go. rain. Uh, he manages to find the pylon. The probe is actually in a weird spot too. He's if you get killed out of there. that, it'd be very nice. But now there's no, yeah, there's no units on the map. There's no map presence at the moment for Haas. His stalker is on the way, but this is actually enough Marines. The mothership core immediately goes across too. I just I think about Haas and I think, man, I would hate to be in the same team as him because I would hate to have to practice with him because this is not beneficial. He canceled. Why do you move it? It's too close. He's. Oh, maybe he thought the Marines would see it going home. And, like, he has this reputation. And I guess immediately knows, you know, like, something something crazy. He immediately scouts. Even now, look, he's building, like, a giant wall protecting his orbital command, kind of. Get a bunker in the front. Stargate goes up <laughs> again. This <laughs> you, is, like... You wouldn't let me proxy it halfway across the map. I'm going to build it right outside your base. So what does he do with it? Is it Void Rays, Oracle? It has to be Oracle, right? It has. I. That's my Tempest? my. My brain is telling me that it has yeah. to be Oracle, but my brain also tells me that Haas doesn't play StarCraft like many other folks play no. StarCraft. No, he does not. I feel like if Haas was a foreign player, he'd be the most popular foreign player that ever. Oh lived. yeah. I imagine this. You know, you just imagine he had some American player that actually wins in, as much as Haas does with these builds, and he just he would just roll up to WCS with like shades on, blasting music, <laughs> be like, "Yeah, you're all scrubs." Signed to EG, probably. <laughs> I'm gonna cheese all of you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> So the Oracle's on the way, but he's just going to pull the SCVs, trying to block the movement of these forces, as those Marines aren't really particularly effective Time warp in this goes position. down, so he's not hes not recalling. He's committed to this. Orbital Command's going to take the natural. He only needs to kill a few, maybe one more Marine, I think, and then the Oracle can clean up the rest, right? Uh, I think, close. is there one or two still in the bunker? Okay, okay. Yeah, he, but the, he they're, do it they're, now. Yes. the ones in the bunker are one shot, so a couple of them. I think this Oracle no, no, can yeah, actually he can clean kill house. these Marines now. Yeah, Oracle can clean house. And he's going to do a good amount of damage oh, to those SCVs here, too. Oh, boy. Stalker's even still alive. Really, really nice. No escape for the Terran forces. He's scared of the bunker. But there's a missile turret in the main, and there's more Marines. Yes. If he just went for the that bunker and killed the SCVs around it, he would have done a good amount of damage. But as soon as you see that bunker and you see that it's lit up, there's someone home, <laughs> he's you're scared. He's building pylons at the Stargate. What? He's so committed. There's one Marine here. He's just like, what is going on? Now he's going to come get a nice big hug. He sees that there's no natural. So I guess right now is in the position of defend, win. Okay, Oracle's dead. Uh... This is rough. Know, huh? Yeah, I, this I, is I rough. Think Iga's, I think Iga's is masterfully defended. Yeah, he should far. be good. Yeah. 
Yes. He's golden. If he had that second Oracle still, he could re-engage because his Stalker does tank so much. It looks like yeah, it's going to be Void Ray Yeah, he canceled the next Oracle, brought on Void Ray. Thing is, like, you're, you're committed so much to this. I don't yes. actually be sure why he built the pylons at the Stargate, but now once he what loses does, this yeah. push, he's going to lose everything. Yeah, because if you're going to lose that first pylon, you're pretty much going to lose it, you're gonna, it, regardless, yeah, you're gonna lose the, it all. The two pylons aren't gonna help or hurt you. It's just gonna hurt if you lose that position. So he has no. Those two pylons to me just say, I'm committed to this. If I lose a fight, I'm just yeah. gonna have and to. And Iagus is starting to more bunkers. There is no reason not to just build five bunkers right now. Yep. He had that Marine there. If he just drops his skin in the natural, he's like, look, you haven't taken any other bases. Just keep building bunkers. Fill the natural with bunkers. And Mr. Turrets, if you want, go crazy. Anything. PFs. It's Haas. Yes. He's not going to expand until he mines out of his main. Oh. And I love how this is Haas's MO, but he doesn't change. You think, sooner or later, this guy has to change. Just think about the fact that he still manages to qualify and get here yes. every season. It's I feel so bad for whoever loses to him. <laughs> like, he must you be know like, what's okay, coming. It's you... Haas. He's going to cheese me. And then he beats you. And it's like, damn it. Yeah, not this time, Haas. Not this time. <sighs> and yeah, look, I guess is playing this perfectly. Three bunkers, probably an over defense, but honestly, at this point, you defend, you're see, gonna you win. See, you think that, and then I guess like, oh, I can pull some of my Marines around and try to hit that Oracle. It's like, oh, then a force field hits, you're like, what? Yeah, and I then still you're think, in that moment. Where, yeah, that's where... how Haas wins. It's not like this is supposed to win. It's just, it's so not supposed to win that your opponent gets confused and they make mistakes. Yeah, they they like can't they salvage those bunkers. Yeah, they're like, then oh, you push I can in, hold this, and, yeah. and it's like, oh no. This void is like rays. the exact situation Jeff was talking about. You think he's not going to keep building five void rays and a bunch of stalkers, but he has is right <laughs> now in his mind. He's like, I got this. <laughs> it's like just a couple more void rays, and I will. Oh, crack this one right open. Is he literally going to go on five void rays? I would just love that. You know, he, I guess his scouting. He knows that it's there. I mean, I mean, it's I even he scans. Like, you scan the natural, and there's like now he pulls the SCVs. I'm just like, you should just keep actually ten SCVs on that bunker. Nope. There is no way you're gonna lose this game unless he breaks those three bunkers. It's it's it's. He has plus one attack too, so those marines are pretty beefy. shields coming in. Does he have does he no, have stim? No stim, I don't think. No stim. Okay. He doesn't need it. He's, he's even throwing up a turret. Yeah. But this is what happens, you know, pull a couple units forward, force field these SCVs that want to repair down to the ramp. The supplies are actually very close. Four Void Rays are going to push in. Charge does go down. He's committing yeah, to a push. Prismatic alignment. He breaks the first bunker open, trying to get a few of these Marines. Force field some of the back. Force field's in the SCVs and these Marines at the base of the ramp, killing a few more of these Terran units. But with Prismatic alignment, Angel K gets the second bunker. Now there's just one bunker remaining, but the Void Ray power is gone. The Zealots are gone, and the Marines are going to step forward. They should be able to clean this all up should. The SCVs are actually doing a great job tanking, distracting those stalker shots, and just surrounding them. This Widow Mine is going to help a lot just to put a clock on Haas. And all of a sudden, you say, I guess up 14 supply. Not a lot, to be honest, but he just has so much structural defense and here. This and Widow three Mine, bunkers. Too. Yeah, and that Widow Mine just puts a clock. He actually has Envision, so he could pick off that Widow Mine. Yeah, I guess he's going to try. Got to be careful. That Mine Shot can do a lot of damage. But there's three more bunkers. Like I said, I guess just just keep building bunkers. Yeah. Like six. Who cares? Yeah. I really, you know, in, in many scenarios, it'd be like, okay, you don't want to build too many. You don't want to over defend. But it's like, oh, no, I'm playing versus Haas. Keep building bunkers. He gets another one. Now the Marines are stepping forward again with the combat shields, with that plus one attack. And these SCVs, as you mentioned, you don't really need workers in this scenario, right? No. Like you are, your opponent's on one base. He's on one base. And this Viking, this Viking's going to help a little bit too. Just to poke, the widow mine comes out again. I would love to see Stim personally, but all in all, I guess is playing this pretty well. Yeah, like Stim will basically be like that's it, like that's the door closing for Haas. And incredible to think that this game oh. is actually going like this already as it is without Stim. These stalkers just kiting. For yeah, days. he's doing pretty well. Yeah, he doesn't have Stim. Stim's not actually on the way, by the way. So these stalkers are going to be able to abuse the slowness of these Marines forever. And the supplies are getting a little bit more even. It's at about 12. But these Marines just have so much health. These Vikings are going to help a lot just to poke down. Igus just doesn't have the chase potential now. Right he now. starts yeah. stim. I think Igus, I think he probably just realized, like, oh, I'm not getting stim. Yes. Ah, uh, bugger. Because he knows if he can chase down these stalkers, he's going to win the game. Yeah, the game ends. If he stimmed, if, like, if, if we, like, enter a magic weird universe where he has stim right now at this very moment. He just stims up. He stims and just wins the game. Yes. There's no force fields. There's no zealot meat shield or anything like that. 
but as is, Hass has great micro, to be honest. He has great micro, and he's just constantly kiting. And you know he's been hurt. in this situation like many a million times, times. Yes, many, many, many times. Probably more than actually anyone that's ever played StarCraft. Yeah. Maybe besides like Combat X. Maximus Black. These something, guys, yeah. These guys all like, like share strategies, you know, play poker together and just talk about all their cheese. Looks like it's just you like watch these games and you think, when does it end? When does he actually <laughs> say, GG, this is not gonna work? And he just he just he wants to believe. The Oracle dies, that means these widow mines are gonna be that much stronger. They're gonna get on top of these Ooh. sentries, splash down the void rays at half HP, Vikings picking them off. Looks like it's gonna be curtain this should soon. Be it. Yeah. GG, Ayag just drops the mule, the and fist bump, he's like, Protoss. He's like, ah. So happy. Is that your I guess impersonation? Go ahead. Oh, Keep man. going. I don't know. Just imagine that's like the kind of cheer you would make. I talk to I talk to Ayagas quite a bit about like strategy and whatnot. We usually in like the root chat we all talk about like uh, oh, yeah. GSL pro league games as we play. Yeah, Ayagas always always has very 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 kind respectful things to say about Protoss aggressive strategy. I'm sure he does. Yeah, he's got a foul mouth. Sometimes. Like if you grow your beard, you could be like I guess. You could have that beard. I don't right know there. if mine could get that fierce. And then every time you win, you could stroke it like he does. I don't think mine could get that fierce. Nah, I believe. You're in also you. assuming I beat a Protoss in a televised broadcast. Yeah, you've had your moments. Mind dropping Hitman is, is all I've got. Well, you beat Hitman. He's now in Premier League. That's pretty <laughs> much. It's pretty much you in Premier League. That's how it works. I'm glad. I'm glad you mentioned that. I think I heard Hitman's taking games off you, so I've technically beaten you as well now. Mm -hmm. as, as well. I've beaten some pretty good players too myself. So. So you. I heard you once took him back out partying. So I've basically beaten partying. We can see like the beginning of the madness here. Actually, this was like stage three madness. Yes. Right? This is. This was after, after the proxy the gate, gate. The pylon. The second pylon. Now the third pylon in the Stargate with the two stalkers. He actually could do a good amount of damage here. I feel like the time warp didn't do as much as it should have, but all in all. What we would expect from the Cheese Master. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty... It's funny because... Cheese over here. Like, if we got into a normal series, like, imagine that this matchup was, like, Innovation versus Rain, and then Rain did that. Everyone would just be like, Oh, my God, I can't believe it, Tasteless. But in this scenario, it's like, <laughs> No, it's Haas. This is pretty... This is pretty yes. par for the course. This is the moment where he could have done a little bit more damage. He kills the Marine. The SCVs retreat in the yeah, bunker. There's just one Marine in the there bunker. Has, yeah, he could just go kill all those SCVs, and he would have been in... Pretty good shape, I feel. Well, uh, we should get into game very soon for map number two because the Wheel of Cheese continues to spin on Moonlight Madness. In the Northeast, our cheesy, cheesy Taiwanese Protoss, he's Haas, currently down 0-1, but that will not deter him from building things in his opponent's base, Hawk. What a great map. In the bottom left, up 1-0, we do have the Australian Terran, I guess. Does SCV see the probe? I don't think I so. I don't think so. And that spells uh -oh. bad news again. And I love this map. Whoever made the name of this map, you know, we haven't seen it. We have. I don't even think we saw it not vetoed this the season thus this far is in base, Premier League. This is like the first. And this is called, the first map I've seen here. And it's called Moonlight Madness. Madness is the perfect. That this is why Has picked this map because it's going to be madness. He's a crazy guy. That's well, that's what this map is pretty much known for. Some of the craziest games. I mean, I'm sure you. I'm sure you've seen anyone that missed it. I think it was in it was in Star League or GSL. It was like Flash versus Classic on yes. this map was one of the craziest yes. games I've, of StarCraft I've ever seen. Period. Proxy Tempest versus. He Marines. like counter pulled everything yes. across the map against it, and that was actually the right thing to do. And like that game just went down to the wire. Like, uh, probably one of the most messed up games of StarCraft I've ever seen. But in the same time, one of the greatest games of StarCraft 2 that I've ever seen. Yeah, and House is actually going to be a pretty good position here. It all comes down to that probe squeaked by barely before the SCV got to the ramp. And now it's, I guess, feels safe. You know, generally speaking, when you get that supply depot, you get that SCV starting to build that depot at the ramp, there's no way that a probe can get there quick enough where you're too worried. But yeah. Haas... Haas will immediately like send it. I don't even know if he rallies his workers to the middle line. That's how quick he gets the probe. There. That's actually a really interesting thing to consider because you know, if for, you do this that any, often, yeah, would you, you uncheck it? Yeah, for any of you that didn't play Wings of Liberty, your workers used to just the game starts. Your workers are all sitting there at your base, but in in Heart of the Swarm, they all rally to the minerals. So you just you just turn that off so that your workers can con immediately go the other direction. And now he sees a zealot. He's like, oh boy, I was. How did you? Where'd that come from? 
I would have preferred if he actually waited, because what ends up happening is the Reaper will, of course, go on the other side of the map. But he did STV scout, so he probably would have checked his in base. Now, he just He's doesn't want... anything yeah, else. Yeah, he, he needs to get a Stalker out immediately. Yeah. The Stalker is pretty much the only thing that's going to be able to contest this Reaper. All in all, though, he's done a great job. He hasn't gotten surrounded. He's done a good amount of damage to the SCVs. He's the using haven't taken real damage yet. Yeah, either. and he's using this pylon to not only distract units, but to also grant vision on top of that ramp. He already lost one Zealot. He's in a tough position now. If he loses the second Zealot, if the bunker gets up, I don't know how he's going to transition. Yeah, I mean, with this, with the bunker getting finished, like you put the two Marines in there, you send the Reaper across the map, and you say. This should be it, right? Right question? No, I don't know. Well, that's... Well, now the probe, but the probe's in a pretty compromised spot too, right? Because yes. how are you supposed to proxy the Stargate for Tempest if you lose it in your opponent's main? Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> now you can go build a Stargate. Sneaky, sneaky probe. I feel like that second pylon was kind of a waste. It I feel like really... it was another vision pylon, right? Yeah, but it didn't add much. You could have still put it out of range. And here's the stage two. Probably going to be Stargate. I mean, what else, what else could you hope yeah. for? He's going to break down these rocks, which is a good move. The Stalkers really won't be a big of a threat, or at least it'll buy him time. With this bunker, though, it's not really a big With concern. the bunker and the rocks? Yes. Now, here's where things get really crazy. He uses the rocks against... Oh, oh he can do that, too. I yeah, say we, we don't the... know. Like, we're <laughs> realistically trying, trying to use our professional knowledge of StarCraft. He's going to get the Reaper? No. Uh, Got one Marine. Cash. He's going to get the second Marine, possibly. He's pretty good micro thus far. The SCVs haven't gotten us around. He's killed three of them, actually. It's 18 workers versus 13. He's actually in a pretty big lead worker-wise. Slam the door, I guess. Don't let the Stalker escape. And the SCV will come, try to block a little bit. No escape. Nice. But all in all, I don't feel like... Oh, he actually trapped that probe with that Stargate. Really? Yes, he did. And I guess is being a little cheeky himself. He's practicing a factory on his side of the map. I think that's really smart. You float it in, probes try to surround, they get wrecked, you know, mm -hmm. the dream. That's one way to do it. But he's not in, he's not in bad position right now. Haas. Wait, he's going to make Haas expand. I think it's because Haas' probe got stuck. Really? Yeah. <laughs> a, no, no, never mind. He's going to do something else. He's sending out... No. He's he scouting he, for the factory. He finds the factory. Wow. How? How did he know? What is... What you know what? Maybe he realized that that SCV escaped earlier on, and he's like, where'd that SCV go? How would he know an SCV left the base? I, he's on the other side. When you've been cheesed and cheesed this much, I You guess, have, like, a good sense. He smells it's it. His, it's he smells his... cheese. He <laughs> lives in cheese, so he can it's, smell cheese. He can smell it in Igus' blood. He's like, you're doing something different this time. Is that Haas's voice? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what Haas's Haas demonic a... English voice would sound <laughs> like. <laughs> Well, we'll see. The Oracle is almost finished. This Widow Mine trying to get in the middle line. Can he kill it? Oh, this is, oh he barely he gets, gets it. Because if he didn't get it in that position, you're just losing yeah. every probe there. And here's the Oracle now coming out. And you got to remember, wait. there's no engineering bay, there's no turret, and there's no Widow Mine. If he can get into that mineral line, it could do a good amount of damage. Yeah, he could actually go there right now. The but he's Marines waiting for a second out. one. Yeah, I mean, well, with two Oracles, double uh, the threat. I guess it depends. Double the mint, double the fun. So perhaps. Hi. I'm not sure. And he walls off. What? Like, that is brilliant. I'm just what waiting is the for Widow the... Mine going to do? Widow Mine can't yeah, attack what do you do now, Widow Mine? Have fun. You're going to build siege tanks in the low ground, too? I would love to see that. that would actually I be would that. love to see that. Well, there's Oracle, so maybe he'd need to build a Thor there or something really crazy. Uh, this where's is the, so where's the Fleet Beacon? That's all I want right now. Yes. I'm waiting for it. I, I imagine right now Roddy is sitting somewhere watching this game backstage, and he's like, please. Yes, please. please. And this is a good amount of damage, actually. He's getting four SCVs thus far. He could engage these Marines with good micro, not lose an Oracle, pick off a good amount. But it looks like he wants to play this fairly conservative. Can't lose an Oracle. He needs them to be a threat. And what is another Oracle? Yeah, so he's man, going just, for three just keep Oracles. building Oracles. <laughs> the factory is... The factory has made its long nomadic journey it's over to the scouted. main base. It's going to get scouted by that probe at the ramp. And Haas is like, oh, are you trying to do something funny? No, I'll, I'll always see it. And he, he should have Photon Overcharge. He's actually building a cannon, it looks like, in his main base. Meanwhile, breaking down these rocks. And the scary part is, I guess it's like, you know, he's there's barbarians, you know? And he has his wall, and he's sitting there, and he's just... I don't know what exactly is out there. They're in the forest. I don't know what is hidden behind those rocks. It could be 15 Stalkers. It could be Tempest. It could be DTs. It could be Void Rays. He's expanding! He doesn't know. Or he could just expand. Now, Well, now he knows that it's an expand. So okay. I guess should feel 
relatively safe. Aegis is like, I thought you unbound the Nexus from your hotkeys because you <laughs> build it so rarely, it was only ever a mistake. Oh, he gets the Widowmine. Looks I think like he baited it with a probe. Yeah, he sacked a probe and then killed the Widowmine. Wasn't that big of a threat, but I guess you got energy, you got energy. Yeah. He's going plus one blink is the follow-up. So maybe some kind of two-base blink stalker all well, in. Well, I have a strange feeling his strategy won't be focused around three bases. <laughs> yeah, I'm. You never know. This could be a new Haas. This is where he flips everything. But it looks like, like all in all, Haas is in pretty good position as long as he can defend whatever push is going to come out for Aegis. He's on two base. He should have a lot of energy on his mothership core. He's going to sack a probe to kill this widow mine. And he's going to, you know, force field, that's a pretty small choke. He's got oracles. He can kill these that's marines. True. And then he's got two photon overcharges. He's got enough energy on what, that mothership core. What board. really impresses me is that the, at the end of all of this, we can see how much respect Aegis pays to Haas and that he has taken so long to move down that ramp and actually kill that gateway. Yes. Like, surely, surely he must consider the possibility. He Didn't could warp he in. Did he could warp in outside of his base right now. Like, if Haas sees that he's moving across the map, couldn't he just warp in, like, two zealots and send them in? Didn't he have stalkers oh, there? Oh, the rocks are still there, I guess. Did he have stalkers there? Didn't he have, like, three stalkers? Oh, he broke the back rocks yeah. and ran. Wow. And now look at this. That's a small choke. It's two or three force fields. Oh, no, no. Well, that's not good. But Aegis is all in here. If Aegis doesn't do damage here, he will lose this game. He has to do damage. And Haas is already in position. He knows it's coming. He just has to force field. Yeah, one base stim Terran, you know. That's so, rough. Yeah, and he's got targets down the medevac. Of, like, he has no choice. He's all in here. And oh, Blink's, Blink's done. already done. Oh, boy. He warps in Zealots. The Zealots are going to oh, take Oh, my goodness. And it looks like Haas is going to be in a big lead he's here. Got, he's two base Protoss against one base Terran. You know, and he I, has a forward pylon. I didn't realize the double entendre by saying that's rough, but then I realized yes, one base stim push. That is, that is actually a rough. That's that like is a rough IBD strategy. Rough. And the look on Igus' face, he's like, "What is happening?" <laughs> Protoss. Protoss is happening. <laughs> sorry. No, I try not sorry. to. I try You're not like, to, not. You know, I try so hard not to be biased, but then you watch these games, and I'm like. I love watching Protoss lose like this sometimes. And he's going to warp in. He's going to go for it. He could just defend, but I guess oh! is, is pulling the boys. It's the one base pull the boys. Rev up those SCVs. But, I mean, now that he knows this is coming, warp in sentries for days. Throw down force field. Buy time. It doesn't matter. You yeah. hold, you win. You hold, you win. And look at this. He even comes out. He's like, yeah, stim again for me. Stim there's not, there's me. hardly any bio here. He stims the marauders again, tries to chase. They just blink away. There's... Four Marauders, a couple Marines, and that's it. 68 supply yeah. to 57. He's pulling these probes, too. He's like, he's like, I will meet you out on the field of battle. They're being so honorable it's, about this. Yeah, it's like, we all bring he apples. He blinks we, in. Focuses down the Marauders with the Stalkers. He knows those are the fire, the fire powerhouses of the, of the army. But actually loses a lot of Stalkers in doing so. Marauders are good units. But everything's going to die anyway. Yes, like he's got one, he's not, he has no economy. It's over. It's all it. over. This is it. This, the medevacs especially are like the big juicy targets. If you kill those, then there's no, there's no saving these units at I, all. I just love how they're both so honorable about this. The first game happened, sure. And then this one turned a little crazy. And I guess was like, you know what? I'll meet you halfway. I'll proxy a factory. And then Hass is like, all right, I'll throw up two gateways to block that. I'm going to actually meet you halfway and play a little macro game. And I guess like, no, sir. More cheese for you. It's delightful. He pulls the boys, tries to go all in, and now we're going to the third game. And what, like, what? I don't. I guess it's like I can't believe this worked. It's like this isn't supposed to work. <laughs> yeah, and he's. I don't know what you do when you're in this. <laughs> like usually you're like you check the graph, and you're like, oh okay, there was like a big battle here. This was the turning point. I lost. I lost a lot of economy here. There's no graph that makes any sense. It's like a five-year-old just doodling on a yeah. piece of paper right you, now. You think that like, in a normal game, that's like, okay, you run in, you kill a bunch of expensive units, and in a normal Terran versus Protoss, you're on two bases. So you're like, okay, I killed a lot of very expensive stuff here. But then you realize, actually, I'm a one base Terran, he's a two base Protoss, he's a rich boy, and I'm the one that's broke. Yeah, he's up 10. And these blinks, too, saved a couple of very weak stalkers. And he's, yeah, he's up 10 workers. And then right here, does he really have to pull his probes to go fight this? No. But he's like, eh. Man. I'll be honorable about this. You want to fight? Get Let's some fight. style points if you'd like to meet in melee combat. I'll bring it to you. Yes, and he does bring it to Igus. 
I guess trying to go all in, trying to do a little cheese himself, and it doesn't work out. He's gonna stroke his beard a little bit more. Yeah, that sad. is the source of his power. I feel like if I guess beat me, I would have to try to cut off his beard. <laughs> you know? If you beat him, that would be yeah, like honor. You know? Like I, you yeah. cut off the ponytail of a warrior. Or... Yeah, yeah, or the beard of the was it? Yeah, the, like the Dothraki or whatever. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah in Game yeah. of Thrones. Yeah, yes, exactly. You have shunned your family, your tribe, and now you will be. Yeah. Well, cut. to be perfectly honest, I mean, I, I wouldn't even be surprised. You know, with the way this series has gone, this is this has just been brutal, right? Just big, big swings being thrown both ways, and now we're gonna finish it up on Iron Fortress. These stats mean nothing to us. Yeah, these are, these are actually like not relevant at all. There should be like a replace every logo on for that has Protoss with Haas. It's yes. like a picture of Haas' face. The fourth race. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The fourth race, Haas, and just be like, yeah, okay, so Haas actually versus Zerg. It's like, yeah, it looks like Zerg is favored on this map against Pros. No, 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 no. Not if against seven Haas, pylons. <laughs> not against seven pylons. We are loaded into game number three here. You're watching the World Championship Series. It's a four-player map, so you cannot proxy inside of your opponent's base unless you are a wizard. In the bottom right, we have the red Protoss from Yoey Flash Wolves, Haas, who finally managed to pick up some points with his Cheddar, or Hauda, as Rotterdam would say. <sighs> and in the bottom left, tied up 1-1 from Root Gaming, it is Igus. Igus should still scout his main base. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. It's like, it's like, I really, really don't want to take that chance. Goes like Nexus. Photon overcharge in his base. I've seen that somewhere. Yes. I can't remember. So I, think I, I, once, I think I once saw, actually, yeah, an American uh, League uh, Terran losing to an American League Protoss uh, on overgrowth. Yeah. So, pro proxy Photon overcharge. I can't, like, I can't bring myself up anymore because I'm getting too much yeah. too much crap for it. That's fine. That's fine. So just, it was rather infamous. It's yeah. out there. There's VODs. Yeah. Check it out. Well, all in all, as our observer is highlighting, Nothing crazy happening, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, but lie. what can you expect? Like, I, I, I assume that Haas looked at this, saw the maps, and thought, well, first two two-player maps, looks like I'm just going to all in here and do something super crazy. And then he's like, maybe the third map, I'll just play macro. No, but I don't want it. I don't, don't want I it? I don't want him to play macro. Okay. I want to see... <laughs> I don't want to say see something, like, really bad, like a carrier rush. Looks like he's proxying something. His scouting path is, like, going to this left side where you would generally put like some kind okay. of okay. some kind of proxy i would still like proxy tempest i feel like he owes rotterdam that for not doing it on moonlight madness and then look he just throws down like what if he just threw down like a nexus right there <laughs> like <yeah. laughs> it no. looks like it's gonna be a stargate and it's actually gonna be in great position the math behind this is that you're at the bottom right so you throw the stargate up on the there's a left side yeah, and you have a good chance to either go to the north or go to the south, and of course, I guess is in the south. And if, if if he's at the top right, you know that's that's the bad side of the coin. That's you losing the gamble. Yeah, you know that he's in one of those other three spots. This basically makes it 50-50. He's either going to be outside of his base from the top left or bottom. I'm yeah. not so sure about that caster map. I mean, no. I guess it's on the wording. Well, if you can get the top left or the bottom left, then you're you're happy. If you if it's in the top right. Although I guess the odds do favor you, 60 to 6, right? Because yes. he's going to be in one of those yes. spots. That's what 50, I was thinking 50. For. That's what I was thinking 50, about. Close enough. Don't do, don't do math on Streamhawk as a caster. You'll learn that yep, one day. Yep, yep. I'm learning it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he does scout. And to be honest, by the time he gets a scout to Haas' base, do you think he let the probe die on purpose? To try to say, like, only feel Haas secure. Would, only Haas would do something like, like you that. You killed my probe, don't worry, I'm not doing anything. But it does look like I guess is going to scout no. it. He's not going to be able to stop the Oracle from coming out because he does have a stalker out. And actually, this could hurt I guess. Having units out on the map when that Oracle comes out could hurt him because there's a stalker. And that stalker is looking to kill whatever it can. There's no Nexus here. It's a very, very quick Oracle coming out. Yeah, so this Marine will die by the hands of these laser beams. The bunker is on the way. There are not enough Marines he to actually deal with this. He There's just started a turret. There's not enough Marines. Yeah, and this bunker's gonna die too. And now there's another probe coming in. He pulls SCVs, but this Oracle is gonna come out and it's gonna do a good amount of damage. The turret is not done either. Looks like he wants to target oh, down no. Marines. This is bad for Ayas. Yeah, you kill the Marines and then the Stalkers are gonna be able to finish everything else up. Like, it doesn't even matter that he can't kill all the workers. He's he's slowed everything else on enough. 
The only thing that worked. Yeah, well, there Two you go. Three. Wow. Might as well just put him in a cage, why bro. Would he, why would put he... him in a cage. <laughs> Lock <laughs> him up. <laughs> you are committed to this push. You are not going anywhere. You can't SCV surround the Stalker if the Stalker can't get out from between these two pylons. Like, I would hate to be in Igus's army. He's like, yeah, we're doing this. You're like, no, this is not good, Commander. Please. And he's like, you have no choice. Uh, oh, my. That's like the, the famous. He just realized that the Stalker's. And why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Who cares? Do it. What are you going to do, Igus? Warp gate's almost done. This stalker is stuck, and he is committed. He's going to kill. He could kill it. If he uh, activated, he could have killed that one of mine. He got out. How did he get out? <laughs> He's wizard. What in the world? This game. <laughs> okay, I'm happy now. You're happy I'm now? I'm happy now. Just I was that, really the gateway, worried. The gateway makes this. The gateway, the gateway is, is the game. complete, well, like, I think three I pylons was overkill, too. No, 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 no. Three pylons, it's normal for Haas. The gateway is just the cherry on the top of the cheese. He's going to he's gonna repair Ugh. this widow mine, but... Only Haas would put a cherry on top of the cheese. It's delicious. Haas loves it. <laughs> when, from one dirty Protoss to another, I love everything about this game. This is... This is going to give me PTSD for a while. Yeah. I can't handle this. Going to have nightmares tonight. I'm going to shake it. <laughs> Waking up in a cold sweat. <laughs> Haas. No, Haas. <laughs> this is all bad. No I, more pilots, what is please. Do? GG. GG's Haas out. takes the series 2-1. And we'll go to the winner's match here at Group T of the World give Championship Give me a smile series. at least, man. You know what you just did? Uh, he's probably upset he didn't actually get to kill all the Marines and SCVs before winning. He's gonna like save the replay, load it up at home, just start killing. He's them. like, can he's gonna ask his friend, can you just resume this one so I can just kill you? Like, if if Haas makes it out of this group, I want to go take him for like some fondue, some just big cheese fondue, just. No, we have to get we have to get him to go out with Roddy and get some howda. I think that's oh, the only ha. some howda cheese. That's ha. the only ideal scenario in this position. Still no tempest. I don't know what to say. But what do you want from of, me? The group is full of Terrans, so we more. are so much more cheese. Gonna... The world is such a beautiful place. There is so much more cheese that Haas could bring. I'm us. scheduled to cast the loser match because I thought Haas was gonna lose. Switch me. Production. <laughs> I wanna. I wanna do the winning match. I don't care. Actually, I, no. I'll forfeit my salary for the day. <laughs> you just want to cast Haas. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Well then. <laughs> what a great series. That was exactly... We sat down to cast this. And it was and I, everything but, I hoped. Yeah, but right before it came to us, just like, you know what? I really hope that this is just the madness that we expect. And like the boys on the desk said prior, like, yeah. What are they going to say now? I'm excited for whatever... What analysis? I feel like they need a whiteboard. Yeah, I can't wait. And like, just like... Yeah. I'm, footnotes I'm very to curious to know what you guys on the desk have to say. Analyze this. Uh, well, we've got a huge grin on his face, a couple of chuckles from me, <laughs> a shake of his head from in control. Uh, Three you pylons start us off, in the gateway. <laughs> Guys, at some point, at some point, and I challenge, this is one of the, the I've been playing Starcraft for 17 years. I can say with confidence, I'm going to say this, that made no sense at all. <laughs> and there's nobody, like there's someone, usually when I say that, there's someone who's on writers or you know, Twitch chat is like, oh, well, actually... Here's what it did. <laughs> Here's what it did. It control you, big idiot. And it's like, no, <laughs> no. They're like, it walled him in, protected him from a widow mine. No. <laughs> protected from two Marines with ranged guns. No. <laughs> so but analyze. I just, all I can say is I love, I wish there was more camera flicks to Hass's face because yeah. it's completely, this is just another day of StarCraft for him. He's like, good God, of course I built the gateway in his base. <laughs> I'm just sad I can only afford three pylons. I was really aiming for six. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to drop two gateways in his base, but it ran out of room. I yeah. mean, yeah, run it out. No, like, there's only one thing that truly stands out for me at the Iron Fortress moment where Hawk thought the Stalker was trapped. I thought the Stalker was trapped. I think everyone thought it was trapped. Yeah. The sickest thing about this all is that obviously he knew it wasn't trapped. He has done this before. <laughs> he has been in this scenario before. Like, this doesn't make any... Why would you ever get in this scenario? That's so ridiculous. And then he just, he just walks out. He's like, all right. We're gonna just wait a minute, then. It's like his bro. <laughs> this is one of the only times too where I, I I do want to interview with Hass at some point, but I actually want to interview Iagaz as well. I want to be like, yo, talk us through this experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, All right. I mean, let's let's talk briefly about okay. that before we move on about Iagaz. I mean, do you think he's just like, well, you know what? I I knew what was coming. I did my mm -hmm. best, but whatever. Do you think you just have to move he's on? He's got to throw that away. Yeah, he's got to throw gotta... that away. He's got TVT ahead of him. 
It's a matchup that's going to it's going to be like such a cool like ocean breeze of like <laughs> oh the Metavex came exactly when I expected it. <laughs> oh god, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a look at the brackets to see what both players are up to and maybe the big surprise here might be for a uh, Marine Lord. I mean, you thought you I mean, there's a high possibility that you have to play him at some point. But I don't know if Marine Lord expected to meet Haas in the winner's match, so that'll be a little bit later in the day, but you the next one... can't expect Haas. None of these guys expected Haas. <laughs> but the next one, like you said, in control will be Aegis, hopefully going into just a fresh breath of air with hopefully a standard TVT, but maybe Moss is thinking they're like, wait, hold Play on. Play into it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Float the command center over, start making the planetary fortress. You never, you never know. like, not again. <laughs> you never know. Well, ladies, I think, I think a lot of people enjoyed it for one reason or another. Game two, we do have Haas moving on. After this break, we'll come back to see if I guess can hold on to his chances or if it's going to be Masa in his way.